Good morning. This is Crystal Woods with Seasons in the Vine, and it's Fresh Friday. And today I want to do a little discourse on Psalm 23. And um, I know it's pretty well known by most people. You may even have memorized it through maybe church, but often funerals. You hear this said a lot over funerals. And um, as I've been studying it lately, I was just really um, convicted to have this not be something that is just said about my life after I'm dead, but that I would be aware of the vast majesty of God and who he is as the shepherd that's represented in Psalm 23 in my life while I'm alive. Like truly knowing what his position is in my life and having him truly be my shepherd. And so I think if, if you watch this through, you may have a new take on Psalm 23 and it might just change your life, which would be awesome. All right. So the Lord is my shepherd. This is a hymn, um, like all of the Psalms. Um, and it is a Psalm of confidence in the Lord's care overall and his presence in our life and what his desire is to be, um, in our lives, like who he desires to be. And so it starts off, it's a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. And so we see right from the beginning this um, idea of a shepherd. So a shepherd cares for the sheep, leads them um, to their water source, their food, protects them from enemies, and is with them all the time. The shepherd is a great comfort to the sheep. The shepherd is needed. And so if I'm saying the Lord is my shepherd, I'm acknowledging my great need for him to literally provide for me in every way possible, food, shelter, water, basic things, but then my protection, my comfort, a helper, I shall not want. And so he, if I am acknowledging him as my shepherd and my Lord, I will not want everything I'm ever going to need or desire can be met in him and through him and by knowing him. I can have um, contentment. I mean, truly contentment in my life. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. So he's lying me down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. And so there's this beautiful picture of being led to places of peace and rest where my soul can be rejuvenated and restored. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So this is a great reminder that like our lives are for his name's sake. And these paths of righteousness are just like peaceful places that we walk as we allow him to change our character into him, into his righteousness. And it's all for his glory. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So I'm going to stop there. So it's translated in this version, this is ESV, as the valley of the shadow of death. But something that's really interesting is that you have to know in the original language, it can also be translated as the valley of deep darkness. And so what's interesting is I think we, we do the valley of the shadow of death and we pair that with funerals a ton, which is fine because that is a valley that the Lord will walk us through, death. But there is also another meaning from the original language or the valley of deep darkness. And so looking upon that, then I can look through the times in my life when I am in seasons of great valleys of darkness and know that I'm going to walk through them and I don't have to fear any evil. So there's a little bit of a parallel here that I want to point out. He makes us lie down in the safe places, in the green pastures, besides still waters we rest. But we're not resting and lying down in the valley of the shadow of death or in the valley of deep darkness. We're walking. We're walking through that. And so don't lay down in that valley, guys. You're not supposed to lay down. We're going to walk through it. We will not, we won't just be content there. That's not where children of the light are to dwell. Yes, we will have times in our life of darkness 
and death and sadness and things that we have to walk through and suffering. But I said we will walk through. And this is directly from the, the word. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And so let's go back to the sheep shepherd paradigm here. So I will fear no evil. So sheep are prey. They have predators that are aggressive with big teeth that want to kill them. We also, as sheep, have an enemy who wants to kill us, steal, kill, and destroy. He is like a lying, a, he is like a roaring lion seeking people to devour. So we know we need the protection of the shepherd so that we can walk through those areas in our life that are filled with darkness, filled with shadows. But we do not have to fear what is in the shadows. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. I do not have to be afraid. For you are with me. What changes that? Why don't I have to be afraid? Because when I walk through that, I'm not walking alone. He is the shepherd. The sheep aren't going by themselves into the valley. The shepherd is with them. And listen, if Jesus is walking beside me, friends, I'm not going to be afraid of anything. Right? Because he's literally conquered the world sin, death, the grave, like he's conquered everything. And he, through his cross, has triumphed over all rule and authority, power and dominion. That's Ephesians. He literally is above everything and anything. Praise God. So I can walk through any valley full of shadows and deep darkness, and I'm not afraid. I don't have to fear anything because I'm not alone. And that's what the enemy would have you believe in those places is that you're by yourself and you have to somehow figure out a way to get through it. Or he would entice you even to just lay down and die in it. But far be it from us because we have this gift of God's word through King David telling us that we're not alone in the valley of the shadow of death and we have nothing to fear from the evil that is around us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. So prepare a table. We're suddenly shifted into this idea that we're going to actually have a feast with God. Like we're eating with God. We're, we're fellowshipping with him in, in all of our life's seasons. Okay. But in this particular one that's that's listed is that in the presence of my enemies. So when it looks like I'm surrounded, that's a song, fight my battles, surrounded. When it looks like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you, God. No matter what it looks like in the shadows, I am surrounded by God and his sovereign care and his mighty power that is limitless to protect me. So he's like, hey, come down and let's eat together among your enemies. You have nothing to fear here. Actually, I want you to walk through this and enjoy my presence. I want you to go about life like it's normal because it is because I'm with you. So eat and drink and be merry and be filled with joy among your enemies because I've made a place for you here at this table. I mean, wow. I want my life to look like that as I'm walking through deep valleys of darkness that I would still have an abundance of joy. And I can tell you, friends, I'm in a crazy deep valley of darkness, deep, deep, deep darkness. And my enemies are all around me. And I am more joyful than I have been in years because I know I am not alone and I have nothing to fear. God is with me. He is my shepherd. And he is walking me through this valley. Praise the Lord. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. No matter what, my cup can overflow. You anoint me with oil. You're protecting me. You're covering me with your anointing, God. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I, I know that to be true. And it's your truth as well. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever forever here can be translated for the length of days or all the days of my life. Literally though, it's for the length of days. So like 
long, short. You know how your days just feel different in different seasons. Like I'm going to dwell in all of those feelings of the days and the lengths of the days for the rest of my life. It also can mean for days without end. So I will shall dwell in the house of the Lord in those days that never end all of eternity forever and ever and ever and ever. And so I, I want this to be said about me at my funeral, but I want this to be said about me today while I am alive, that I can see that God is my shepherd and he takes me to green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He gives me rest. He renews me because he is my good shepherd. But then when I have to walk through, I'm not laying down. I'm walking through the darkest times of my life. I first fear no evil. He has conquered everything above the earth, in the earth and below the earth. All evil must bow to the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, my great shepherd. But he is with me. What a beautiful communion with him. In those moments to know he is with me. We're sitting at the table. We're sitting at the table and we're enjoying the fellowship of each other while the enemies are all around. Nothing can steal my joy. Nothing can steal my communion with God, my walk with him. And so I want to just bring that to life for you in a new way. Psalm 23, let these words never grow cold or fall on deaf ears to us. Let them renew us to the hope of who our shepherd truly is. And so I pray that this met you exactly where you are and gave you fresh perspective and encouragement and joyfulness in the Lord. We're never alone. We have nothing to fear. He provides for us our every need. Go in peace, friends, and filled with this knowledge. I will see you next week. Bye.